Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, you find a way to win or you find a way to lose. <clears throat> and look, man, what did Terrence Crawford do so bad for, you know, Steven Espinoza, Showtime, PBC, and the people on that side of the fence, right? What did he do so bad that um, they, don't, they don't trust this man? You know what I'm saying? Because honestly, that's what it boils down to. There's a serious trust issue over here, and I'm not sure Crawford did anything significant enough uh, to compromise um, to compromise the, the 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 trust factor. You know what I'm saying? I just don't really understand what's the uh, what's the big deal. But what I will tell you is Crawford is. <laughs> He's over there working with those guys. You know, he wants to Spence rematch. But these guys are making such a big deal about this, this weight at 154. I, I, I really don't understand what the issue is. The, the contract was written the kind of way, obviously, to where the, the weight, the fight happening at 147 or 154. And this is just for me going off of what we've heard because I haven't seen the contract. I don't think anybody who's creating content seen the damn contract. But obviously, it sounds like there's, there's, there's some stipulation in there about weight and whether it happened at, you know, 154, 147. Uh, Earl Spence is kind of asking, hey, almost like, do me a favor and let's have the, the rematch at 154 if this whole fight happened because of me. Then, hey, man, I lost. You're the better man. But let's run it back at a weight that I feel I'm more comfortable with. You know, I, I just... I, I haven't heard that Crawford and his team... I haven't heard anything from a credible source for, to suggest that Crawford has drawn the line in the sand and wants to fight at 147. I just don't believe that. What, what I do believe is, and this is my opinion, I believe that Steven Espinoza, Showtime PBC, I'd even say the sanctioning bodies, the secret society, maybe outside of the WBO. But I'd say everyone else, I think they really wanted Earl Spence to win that fight. I do. And, um, you know, I like Earl Spence. I like Terrence Crawford. <clears throat> I don't have a dog in the fight. I don't have favorite fighters. My two favorite fighters no longer box. But I really feel that stars were being lined up to push for Canelo. Canelo to beat Crawford, come undisputed. Probably not have the rematch, right? Um, even though Crawford could have exercised it if had he lost. But I think, I think they were kind of expecting Spence to get the win and then to push for Spence and Canelo. If you, if you look at the, the, the timing of everything, right? Let's peel this back. Look at the timing of everything. Canelo coming over, holding off on making Crawford and Spence, then all of a sudden making Crawford and Spence. Then miraculously all this money appears out of nowhere to make the Crawford and Spence fight. Uh, Canelo won a three-fight deal. You can't tell me that one of those three fights that they signed Canelo for, although they're paying this man like, you know, 30-something million to fight, plus pay-per-view revenues, right? You can't tell me that they weren't planning on putting Earl Spence in with Canelo. And you know what's happened? The same guy, Terrence Crawford, who tried to have a conversation with everyone, and they were basically laughing at him, scoffing at him, and, and not taking him serious. And he ended up having to learn on the job. And then they drug, drug their butts on getting back to him um, on some things. And by the time they did, he had already had things in motion with Evanescean. And he was like, yo, I'm, I'm going to go fight this guy. And everybody's like, Crawford, Duck, Spence. Nah, man. In my opinion, what Crawford did was smart. You got three, four pokers in the fire. You don't. You want to stay active. You go after the one that heats up. So essentially, by them delaying 
the negotiation. This is on the short term side and them taking forever to figure out what they want to do, right? Because that's where a lot of the 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 the, the, the I would say the, the chaos was at it was over there and <clears throat> remember Earl Smith said they were all telling him basically no, don't give him Earl Crawford to fight unless it's gonna be this way. But they they advised against it, and especially on the purse split and a few other things. So that tells me that all along, it was Earl Spence's side of the street, and and understandably so when it comes to some things. When you you have three belts, three of the four belts, um, you're the a you're essentially the A side. No undisputed happens, you know, unless you choose to fight somebody because you have three belts. You could keep, you know, running the circuit, facing your mandatories and, and picking up wins. You don't have to deal with this guy like Crawford. But that just tells me that that was kind of the mentality. And now you look now, it's kind of the same thing going on. Espinosa talking about the contracts again and the money and everything's already a, <clears throat> it's already a set because the contract stipulated who would get what in the rematch. But all of a sudden, there's a couple of nuances that they're trying to iron out. I mean, what nuances? That's what I want to know. What what are the nuances? Because that doesn't make sense to me. Anybody else? So I put it this way. Why is it okay for, for, for Earl Spence and his team to, to want to make sure that they're taking their time and making the right decisions and uh, that's best for his career and for that team. And then for Terrence Crawford now, why why isn't wasn't it okay for him to do that? And in this particular case, <clears throat> it's the same thing kind of happening right now. And I don't see how they could possibly put a spin on this to try to somehow label Crawford as the difficult party and you know br- bridging negotiations and getting the fight off. All of a sudden now, you want to talk about Terrence Crawford and how they would frown upon him forcing the rematch at 147 because he holds all the marbles. But but then again, he's willing to go up three weight division to fight Canelo. That's none of, I, I, I want to say that's none of Showtime as Espinosa's business. If Crawford wants to do that, what, what are you talking about? All they can do is block the fight, which I think they would block his fight. With Canelo, because him and Earl Spence fighting again. Let me tell you, that's the fight they want to happen to Spence and Canelo. But that's not going to happen. Crawford, I just can't see Crawford not tranquilizing him. I just you can't. I just can't make me believe Crawford will not tranquilize him. That right hand, southpaw stance, seventy-five inch reach, and 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 excellent eyes and counter punching ability. That's just too much for uh, for Earl Spence. But all of a sudden, <clears throat> Crawford is a this issue with Terrence Crawford. Man, this is just ridiculous, man. And now this man gonna be out the ring a whole nother year. So I don't I don't know what honestly for Terrence Crawford and his team, I don't know what they're thinking. I don't know what they're going to do. But Terrence Crawford's in listen, listen, you know, we had I just did a video talking about the per in a perfect world. <clears throat> We're not talking about a perfect world right now. This is a reality. But in a perfect world, Crawford could easily go on to fight if he keeps winning. Maybe for the opportunity to become a three, four, five-time undisputed in different weight divisions. You know what I'm saying? Because, I, like I said in the other video, I mean, 147, he's got that. 154 is really close to being undisputed. 160 is really close to being undisputed. 175 is really close to being undisputed. Those three weight divisions alone, if he can get in there and win those fights... Which, again, this is perfect world now. We know that it's not going to be easy. And in some senses, you tend to say he won't do it, right? But it's those those are things that are out there if he can win. But the reality is he probably will never get those, those chances because once he leaves from over there at Showtime with this rematch with Spence, you know, we got to see what he's going to do. But where does Terrence Crawford go? So, so he's in a. I think he's in a bad situation personally. Outside of Spence, what does he do? You know, because this man wants to fight the biggest fights possible, make the most money. 
And it's like I did a video and told you, Terrence Crawford's cooling off. He ain't hot no more. That's not a that's 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 not me. That's not an attack on him. That's the truth. Once he cools off, which is already happening because he's not active and you get these guys coming out there and trying to, you know, saying little things, which is just enough, man, to make people say, Oh, yep, here he goes again with his attitude. He still hasn't learned anything. Went out there, got a payday against Spence. Spence did him a favor. Crawford told my yeah, brother's taking care of each other now. Look at him. He's going back to, to being that same miserable, angry, bitter guy from Omaha, Nebraska, which is not the truth, man. And although Crawford is, is more active on social media, I think he should come out and address that, man. Don't let them kill your shine. It's just like yeah, anybody who was out here saying something like Earl Spence isn't ready to fight in December because he's, you know, He's, he's still out here in the clubs drinking and getting drunk. Yo, come out and kill that. Don't, don't and, and matter of fact, anybody who's saying that, man, put a little pressure on them. Don't let them come out there and slander your name and, and defame your character and stuff like that, man, because that's not what's happening with Spence or Crawford. I truly believe Spence needs to take that time to heal up. He don't know what's going on in, 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 internally, things we can't see, and he, he's not going to come out and disclose to the public whatever medical advice he's being given. Espinosa for sure is not going to tell you nothing. And if it turns Crawford, he's just there in a the holding pattern and realizes that, hey, my hands are tied. But what I think Crawford should do is ask for an, uh, like an, an exemption, a one-time thing to kind of have an interim fight to stay active. Fought in July, it's almost December, it's August, September, that's six months, and fight in March, nine months. Damn, man, it's been going on a year. But it's crazy, man. Crawford didn't do it. There's, there's no. I don't. I don't. I don't understand why there'd be any trust issues. It's not like you're dealing with the. I'm trying to think if there were ever any instances of somebody just really doing something foul and pulling out a boxing match and causing a promoter. Okay, as of uh, uh, more more recently, and there's not much you can do about it, but. I would say that Conor Benton situation was was a situation where I would think you would lose some trust for a fighter. Um, and then you look at where they are now with that, you know, his promoter and his people are still behind him, still pushing him. He's still out here getting paid. Um, but I wouldn't be comfortable going into a fight just knowing what happened with Conor Benton. Like, I, would, I think I would struggle with the whole idea of going into a fight uh, just as a manager, promoter with Conor Ben, but with Terrence Crawford, I mean, hey, I just, and maybe because there's no true love there for Crawford, I, and that's what I think is the issue. No true love, no true respect. As a result, there's no trust, and um, they're sour because Crawford came over there and, uh, you know, did what he did to uh, their flag, one of their flagship fighters in Earl Spence. So anyway, I remember Ricky Hatton, um, Ricky Hatton's, the guy who was training him before Floyd Mayweather Sr. took over. So he was saying how he was uh, enjoying the ride with Ricky Hatton and he wanted to continue on that ride and journey until Ricky Hatton retired. And he was like, but the journey continues for him. He's like, but it's over for me because Ricky Hatton uh, got rid of him. And over here with Crawford and Espinosa, I think it's, I see it like a kind of situation for Terrence Crawford and Espinosa and every, uh, well, Espinosa and, and Earl Spence and, and uh, Al Heyman, where it's kind of like they were enjoying the ride, they were enjoying, enjoying the journey uh, with Earl Spence. And then um, what happened is Crawford came in, kind of like Mayweather Sr., and he, uh, and, and, and he stopped all of that. And, and they seem to be a little bit sour about it. But if I was Crawford, I wouldn't trust them. How can you sit there and, and trust some people to have your best interests, man, when they coming out here, man, and trying to force you to fight at a certain weight to give their guy a, a more of an advantage? And when I say advantage, I'm not saying he'll have the advantage over Crawford, but it gives him an advantage to, to where he's feels better, he feels more confidence, more confident. 
How can you trust somebody? You, know, you want your fighter to come up with more confidence and to feel better, stronger, to not have to be be as uh, I, w- I would say as uh, as disciplined and focused to cut the weight. So y'all want to make sure Earl Spence has the best opportunities possible to get in here and beat me. How could how could you know? I mean, that's a whole other video, but Crawford should be the one not trusting them. And if he was to pull away from this fight, which I know he he wouldn't, and he I don't think he can, but I'm sure that would have a lot to do with it. Where he's like, they don't, they weren't being fair, they were catering to Earl. I could already hear it. But anyway, I'm about to go work out. I'm gonna do another video about that. Why Crawford shouldn't trust them, because they they they're not okay with their flagship fighter losing. It's just like when Eddie Hearn had AJ. Eddie Hearn almost had a Eddie Hearn had a damn meltdown in the ring when AJ lost to Ruiz. If you go watch Eddie Hearn, he was wiping the sweat off his brow. His tongue was hanging out of his mouth, wrapped around his head, dragging across the top of his head. Eddie Hearn damn near had a heart attack right there in the ring. And that's why he was like, uh-oh, the journey's over. But they they did what they had to do. And that rematch made sure that he got the win. And then the journey, uh, they were able to continue on the journey. And I think over here with Showtime and PBC, that's kind of a similar situation. Different different type fighter in front of Earl compared to what uh, AJ had in front of him with uh, Ruiz. But I think that's what they're looking at. They're going to try to make sure that whatever can be done to get that, uh, that rematch in, in play, to where Earl Smith has the upper hand as far as just him being as comfortable as possible, they're going to try to do that. And Terrence Crawford ain't going to let you bully him now. He's not going to go for that crap. But that being said, y'all keep cool, man. Shout out to the veterans, all seven continents. Y'all out to the gym.